chronic traumatic encephalopathy. The disease CTE. The disease distorts the structure of the brain. These repetitive head blows cause neurodegeneration. My son Patrick Grisha was a hometown hero in high school football. But throughout high school, prep school, and Dartmouth College, our sweet, tough, young running back received enough subconcussive blows to his head to essentially seal his fate. Uh, Karen Kinzel's son, Patrick Risha, was a football player. There he is pictured there, handsome fella. Tragically took his own life at the age of 32. After his death, his family learned he had CTE. When he was first born, I took him to the window at McGee Hospital. It was a beautiful sunny day and you could see out over Pittsburgh. And I just felt so much hope and joy for him. I said, honey, here's the world. You're going to get it, honey. You're going to enjoy it and conquer it and live a wonderful life. We were a football family. His dad was a coach. I would cheer and yell and, you know, do all the things the football mom does. I was, like, really into it. He always had the ball, and they called him the horse. And the coach said, we're going to ride Risha to the playoffs. We're going to ride that horse till we win. He was very brave. He, he got hit a lot. He got hit constantly, 60 times a game, maybe. He came home, he looked like a red piece of meat. But he loved it, and he was so, so good at it. But there was always that fear that he could get paralyzed, and that would scare me. But I never dreamed it could be a brain injury. Patrick was very excited to be at Dartmouth, but by his junior year, I think he was becoming reclusive, and things were starting to just, you know, be hard for him, difficult. He was having a hard time dealing with coaches. Every now and then he would just get angry about the silliest thing, and that wasn't like him. He was never like that. I would not know about CTE if it weren't for Emma Key. CTE is a disease that can rob you of your life even at a very young age, like Patrick Risha. It's a neurodegenerative disease. And what that means is that the disease continues to progress over time. And once it's started, once it's triggered and it's taken hold in your brain, it's gonna gradually get worse the longer you live. And there's nothing much you can do about that. The CTE is triggered by repetitive brain trauma. And that can be repetitive impacts like concussions and subconcussive hits. So most of the hits to the head, be it soccer, be it football, be it ice hockey, tend to be to the frontal lobes. And those are really important brain areas for self-control, for decision-making and impulse control. It's also important in emotion regulation. Things like depression become worse with frontal lesions and just basically decision-making. <sighs> Living with someone that has CTE is uh, scary. It's scary for them. He just couldn't stop the madness, and it truly is madness. He needed help, but he didn't know what he needed. He just, his mind was unwiring, and he knew it. I remember him literally asking me, like, you know, I just don't understand, like, what's going on with, like, my brain, right? Like, he's just like, I, I, I can't, like, read anymore. It was the day of the christening for, for Peyton, and Patrick was, everybody was scurrying around getting ready and getting dressed and Patrick couldn't tie his shoes. And I'm thinking, what the heck? I mean, the guy's, a, he's a superstar. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a gra graduated from Dartmouth. It stuck with me. The best thing about Patrick is that he always made sure I was okay, no matter what. No matter if we were dating, not dating, he was the go-to guy. You could call him and he was still going to be there for you because that's just the kind of person he was. But as the disease progressed, he couldn't play with him. He couldn't, he really couldn't do anything at all with him. So it was, it was sad to watch. And again, not knowing that it was a, you know, a disease, I thought it was a choice that he made to just not want to be there. Just making 
they? Four years has gone by since Patrick passed. The hardest part, you know, for me with losing Patrick is just not having him here and not seeing his son grow up to be this amazing boy. It would have made him so proud, everything that he does and everything that, even his jokes that he tells. I mean, Patrick just would have been <laughs> beaming. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, for me... And they would have been conspiring to do different yeah. tricks to us. We would have been, things would have been, yeah. Things, things were always a lot more exciting with Patrick in the room. He made things uh, fun. So. Yeah. I think he had probably made the decision to do what he did days ahead. And I think he was working towards it. And I think maybe that's why he made the phone calls. And somebody said he called you because he wanted to connect with you last. I don't know if that's true. I, I, I struggle with that one. I feel like maybe he wanted me to change his mind and I failed that part. There's so many factors that go into suicide that have nothing to do with CTE. Uh, but is it more likely that you're suicidal if you have CTE? Uh, our suspicion is that's true, but we don't have the hard data. And we're starting to look at epidemiology to get a better idea if CTE and suicide go hand in hand. There is evidence in the literature that trauma, even a mild trauma like a concussion, increases your risk for suicide. I think the greatest obstacle to this research is that this hits people in such a core of who they are. We identify as Americans through our games. And when you say that these games might be dangerous, somehow this is threatening to people at a level that I would never have anticipated. Trying to get through that we need to act on this now so we lessen the problem, so we take care of our athletes as they're growing up. Uh, I, I love the game of football, but I love my, my players more. And looking at concussive head injury through the course of time, uh, I was five years ago, I made the decision that we were going to eliminate tackling from our practices. Banging your head against something repeatedly over an extended period of time can't be good for you. So I just announced to my staff, we're not going to tackle in practice this year. And they were all waiting for the punchline. Like, yeah, right. So we basically took inanimate objects and had guys tackle. One of the frustrations that I had was we couldn't replicate a moving target. And really the genesis was my son. He had a little car with a joystick and he used to chase the, the cat and his sister and the dog and everything else and drove me nuts. And, and I thought, well, could we do that with a bigger thing? So uh, one of my classmates here at Dartmouth, John Courier, uh, was in the graduate school of, of engineering. I just called him up and said, hey, John, any chance you could make one of these things move? And then he took it from there. This is kind of a misnomer, not tackling. We tackle, and we tackle a lot. We just don't tackle each other. Mindsets had to be changed slowly. Coaching mindsets, players' mindsets, parents' mindsets. And to the point now, I think people kind of embrace the idea, hey, you can do this, and you do it very, very successfully without compromising the health of your players. If I stopped tackling and we went 0-10, you wouldn't be talking to me right now. We stopped tackling and we had success. Dr. McKee and the, and the Boston Concussion Group, they're just so passionate about what they're doing. And it's uh, at times they're attacked as they're trying to d d destroy a sport, uh, destroy a game. And I address that quite often. They're trying to save it. Right now, not being able to identify it in the living, not being able to monitor its progress, either at getting worse or getting better, is, is completely holding up any treatment. And that's what we want. We want to be able to treat this disease, stop it in its tracks, prevent it from becoming a much bigger problem down the road. Doug and I are here to present about chronic traumatic encephalopathy, CTE. So we're hoping to reach a lot of people here and tell them about CTE and why it's probably in their lives and they just don't know it. Hi there. Karen, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. The last thing that Karen and I are, are professional speakers. Always a challenge for us to get up in front of an audience, but the message is so important. I admire Karen for being able to fight through it every time, and, and uh, we make a, I think we make a pretty good team. It's a long grieving process. I mean, the, the pain 
I went from actually screaming, daily screaming a lot, to now the, the, the pain swells up, but it's further and further apart. And doing something like this, where I'm busy and helping others, it helps us get through that process. So we're not going through that pain quite as often. And I do find, I try to tell Patrick every day I love him. And I think every day he tells me he loves me by doing different things to send me a little message that, okay, now you have to do another speech. <laughs> when we found out what took Patrick away from us, we made it our mission that we're going to stop this devastation for others. It was so important for us to get this foundation up and running. We were very committed that, that we had to reach out to parents that have kids, that this is a, a disease that is way more common than people think it is, and that they need to be careful and prevent it. When you lose somebody, you, you realize how important family is. I think sometimes you just take family for granted a little bit. Boy, it, it was a wake-up call. I had a grandfather the other day, he's very proud his grandson was playing football, and I said, but Sam, d didn't you hear anything we've been talking about? He said, yeah, but he's got the latest helmet and he's never had a concussion. I said, you weren't listening. Sadly, I still have friends who let their kids play hockey and let their kids play football, and they share it on Facebook as well. And I go, what, what am I missing? You know, what? So we still have work to do. So Karen is absolutely amazing. I mean, she's taken personal tragedy, just extreme personal tragedy, and turned it into a positive for other people. You have people like Karen that are willing to you know, give up their time and, and, and support research, tell their personal story. That impacts me as well. And does it make me think a little bit differently? Because again, it's someone's child. And I've, I've said it before, I love the game, but I love my players more. Would you rather hold a bunch of little newspapers with their picture in it or hold your son? Because that could be the choice someday. Um, this is no fun. I would rather be holding Patrick and him making some comment about me being funny. Let, let go, Mom. <laughs> yeah. yeah, how long is this hug got to last? He would always tell me my hugs were too long, but this is nothing. This is, uh, who cares who won the Moon Elizabeth Forward game in 1999? Who cares? Was it worth losing your life for? <laughs>